everyone. Welcome to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is Jess Brandis, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. Happy Philly Pride. It is Sunday, June 9th, and I am getting ready to go out there. By the way, if you are new to watching the show, please go into Mixcloud, iTunes, and now YouTube. Subscribe, rate, and review, guys, because the more we're seen, the more we're heard, the more we can spread that word. You can also go on to dwjphl.com for all of our social media links, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and have links to all the archive shows because we are now on show 122, which is very exciting, and I love doing this at Philadelphia Pride. Nacho's been all crazy. He's seen me uh, pack up all of my equipment, and uh, he's getting a little nudgy. But I do want to thank our new sponsor. In fact... She's going to be doing a portrait of Nacho. So please visit the thedottest.com. Miss Victoria Valuse is an incredible artist. She does delicately hand-drawn pictures of your pet, and there's no better way to commemorate and memorialize that love for your animal than to have her do a once-in-a-lifetime uh, piece of art for you. So please check her out at thedottest.com. You can find all of her social media links in the web notes as well as, or in the show notes, I'm sorry, as well as if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it on the screen right now, but this is uh, incredible as far as the process she goes through to create these uh, once-in-a-lifetime pieces that are memorable and will be with you forever. So please make sure you love your pets, show that love to your family and friends, gift it if you can. Uh, I think it's absolutely incredible. So check her out at thedottest.com. For the rest of you... It's Philadelphia Pride, and this is a very special year for Prides all over the country. First of all, this is the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, which occurred June 28, 1969. New York City was the first city in the United States to host a gay pride parade during the one-year anniversary on June 28, 1970 of the LGBT beginning of LGBT rights uh, civil rights movement. And, of course, we have made a lot of progress, and we still have more to make. The The United States in general has a lot more progress to make. But Philadelphia, interestingly enough, has been one of the first cities also to host Gay Pride. They started in 1972, and they had Gay Pride parades until 1976. There was then a 10-year lull for reasons that I have not figured out yet. But there was a 10-year lull, and in 1988... They had an impromptu gay pride parade. Since then, we have gone strong. I'm talking tens of thousands of people hit the streets to watch or partake in this event. And it's only getting bigger. And that's what I love about Philadelphia Pride. So this year is now going to be the 31st. So since 1988, last year was the 30th. This year is the 31st annual event. And it is going to be wild if i remember from past years every year that i go there are lines around the streets getting into establishments there are hundreds of vendors there are representatives political representatives community representatives of all kinds shapes colors religions everything that come to this event and that's what makes it so special it's also very special this year because this week when you're hearing this show june 12th is the third anniversary of the Pulse nightclub massacre in Orlando, so we want to make sure that we pay homage to them. We'll do that at the end of the show, of course, um, showing pictures and and making sure that that we allow our community to still build on the strength and fight for those who lost their lives just for being them. You know, I mean, this this is a game changer in so many different ways. But I'm going to say this: as much as I love Philly Pride. New Hope Pride is always my favorite, first of all, because it is the beginning of the Pride season. And they are such a wonderful community, but this is also a dual state Pride, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get showered up. I'm going to head over to the Hilton Hotel at Penn's Landing, and I want to thank everybody at the Hilton for being so accommodating to me and the show and having me set up there. And we're going to bring on Grand Marshal 2019 of Philadelphia Pride, Mayor of Lambertville, Julia Fall, and this woman is so impressive. Not only is she part of the LGBT community, but she is 28 years old and and beat her 
incumbent mayor who has been mayor since she was one, 27 years. Her story is incredible, and I cannot wait to get her on the mic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get showered up. I'm going to put on a fresh black T-shirt because it is Black Tea Day for me, and we are going to head out to Philadelphia Pride, and we will see you there shortly. Stay tuned for more Drinks with Jess. The Drinks with Jess is making a big splash. It's time to join forces and step outside of our comfort zones. There is strength in union. It's time for people to tell their stories and make a difference. That is what we aim to do. The Drinks with Jess podcast is where we bring the LGBT community and its allies together to share each other's missions and help each other grow. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Bringing you amazing guests that cover a wide variety of topics and are inclusive to all cultures and communities. Join us on this amazing journey. Okay. Okay. Everyone, welcome back to the Drinks Suggest podcast. Philadelphia Pride is loud and proud right now. And I have Mayor Julia Fall. And she was actually one of the grand marshals of the parade. And you are the new mayor of Lambertville, New Jersey. That's correct. And that is close to a town that I love, New Hope, where I did the first show this season for Pride. So you have an interesting story yeah. um, about becoming the new mayor. Sure. So I actually, uh, I ran against a 27-year incumbent, uh, and the joke was that he was inaugurated the first year, uh, for his first year, the year I was born. Jeez. Uh, and he never had a serious opponent. Um, and so my wife, Carrie, and I, um, we were looking for somebody to run for mayor. We asked 11 people to run, and uh, everybody said no. <laughs> and then uh, it was a couple of weeks before the deadline, the filing deadline, mm-hmm. and... I looked around and said, if nobody else is going to do this, I guess I am. Wow. And then I knocked on uh, every door in my town. We have 1,932 doors. Um, I missed, I think, probably around 30 of them. Right. But I hit every door at least once, oftentimes more than once, and uh, talked to people about things that they care about, like uh, trash pickup and street paving and uh, how the city can be more transparent and how government should be working better for you. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I won uh, by a 10% uh, lead. What? Yeah, it was a blowout. That's like badass. It was sort of badass, yeah. yeah. But the crazy thing was that I really did this in total partnership with my wife, mm-hmm. and um, we worked on that campaign every step of the way together, and I was out shaking hands and kissing babies, and uh, she was in our war room. Did you room. have like a ring on, like the Pope, like kiss the ring? No, absolutely not. I was sort of begging for people's votes. It was like the exact opposite of that. <laughs> um, but uh, while I was doing that, uh, Carrie and a team of really dedicated volunteers was behind me making sure that... Um, uh, everybody got flyers, that people were invited to meet and greets. We did 21 meet and greets in people's homes talking wow. about issues that they cared about. I mean, like, how does it feel, though? Because, I mean, you're 28 years old. That's right. For another month and a half, I'm still 28, and, everybody. But, but you're a freaking <laughs> mayor at 28 yes. years old. I, I like mean, to call myself a child mayor. A child mayor? Yeah. And there's a there's a series of child mayors all across this, the state of New Jersey. We actually just hired a business administrator in the city of Lambertville. It's the first time we've ever had that position. It's a full-time professional who's there to make to execute uh, the mayor and the council's vision for the city, which is really exciting. Um, and he actually was also a child mayor. When he was 23, he was mayor of his hometown. Wow. So we've got, like, the original child mayors, like, teaming up together to, like, get stuff done. Oh, my God. It's like, it's like the whole next generation of, Absolutely. like, politics. Yeah. And, you know, the, the exciting stuff um, about small town politics is that it really is public service right i care about my community and i want to see my small town in the state of new jersey right. just get a little bit better and uh i get to work on that every day it's really exciting i mean i i've been to lambertville i mean i'm a big fan of new hope of course but um, lambertville's better that's okay great uh, that's I, I been, what was it the, the lambertville inn i think the station the station yeah, yeah I, i've been to dinner there sure yeah. gorgeous place and for you guys who don't know carrie was actually on the new New Hope Pride show um, where I messed up her name. That's right. And didn't have the right microphone. So I decided to hook this up for <laughs> Julia here. Um, so that way we're making Carrie very proud. Yeah, exactly. And, and not right. scaring her away again <laughs> with this show. But I mean, uh, have you always had like this interest in politics? I mean, you're so young. I mean, I'm, I'm 43. So 
I've had so many different interests if I've gone through my life. I mean, music and radio and stuff like that has always been my interest. Um, so it kind of went full circle and back to it. But have you always had this yeah. public service interest? Actually, um, I've been working in politics for 11 years. Um, my parents are going to hate that I say this, but I did. I dropped out of high school to knock doors for John Kerry when he was running That's for president. Awesome. My parents would have loved that. <laughs> um, well, they should talk to my parents. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, so I cared about politics and worked in politics my entire life, but I always expected to be the person behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sort of working towards electing Democrats up and down the ballot. Uh, I never thought that I would run for office. And it turns out that uh, it's something really special. Right. And I think a lot of people sort of see politics and public service as this untouchable thing that, like, only people who wake up every morning wanting to look like Jack Kennedy get to do. Right. Um, but actually, uh, it's really accessible, like, Anybody can go and knock on their neighbors' doors right. and talk to them about things that they care about and making their community better. Right. And, and and we've seen that, like with the blue sweep, with the midterms. I mean, absolutely, we, we saw that even at the House of, of Representatives in the Senate. I mean, yeah. we really did see that occur. Absolutely, but you know, it's Congress sometimes can feel really, really far away, right? Like running for council is uh, is much more accessible, and you get to directly, uh, you know, impact your community. And so I'm, I really hope that we can keep electing young uh, gay youth to represent their towns. Absolutely. And uh, that's what I, I'm, I really care about, and I'm hoping to help support uh, people all over the state of New Jersey run for office. Well, okay, so I'm going to ask you something, and, and before I get to to how you feel about being at Philly Pride today. Sure. Um, but, okay, so we have almost two dozen Democratic candidates for president. That's now, right. I, I know my, my top favorites. Okay. Okay. I just want to see what you think as far as their vibe. Okay. So you... Are we going to go through each tw all 20 oh, individually? Oh, no, 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 oh, no. But, <laughs> but that, that would take a but, little while. I mean, of course, like being in Philadelphia and being so close to Delaware, we're a very big Biden fan. Well, you know, I'm a New Jersey mayor, so I got to support my home senator, Cory oh, Booker. Co well, Cory That's Booker a... is awesome. But, you know, I think the exciting thing um, that we as Democrats have to keep in mind is that uh, crowded primaries often elect presidents. Well, yeah, considering that the last primary was uh, freaking crowded, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, uh, there's been, regardless of uh, whether or not you're a Republican or a Democrat, uh, when there have been crowded presidential primaries, they have always, uh, that primary has always elected the president. Right. So uh, I think it's a blessing to have a lot of choices, and I'm really looking forward to hearing everybody I, talk. I, I like Kamala Harris. Oh, yeah, sure. I Me like too. her. I like Elizabeth Warren. You know, of course, I like Biden and I like, you know, Bernie Sanders. I mean, who doesn't love Bernie? <laughs> but, you know, I, I think bringing in a younger new vibe is essential. Mayor Pete, he's just adorable. Yeah, he's you great. Know? He I, really is. And I'm really excited about um, uh, another young gay mayor talking about the importance of... Yeah. Uh, Especially from the Midwest. I mean, yeah. you really don't see that. Well, it's interesting because uh, I think sometimes people forget that uh, being a mayor is sort of your closest uh, access to Democratic politics. Right. Uh, Democrat with a little d. Uh, that, you know, mayors are the, are the folks who are your direct line of action to your government. And so it's really exciting to have somebody on the national stage talking about that. Yeah. And also talking about the importance of young leadership. Right. Well, you, you are certainly making waves, and I'm, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, if you didn't know, Julia got an award. Oh, today yeah, at Philly Pride. Hold on, let me go get it. Yes. It, it rings. The Liberty Bell. We got that. That is for Philly Pride. Yeah. Um, but what was the feel over at the... Because I missed the parade. I've been kind of set up here. Sure. Work. Um, Everybody's got to work on Pride. That, that That's is the true. dirty secret of Pride, is that every gay person has like a little bit of work to do that day before they can enjoy it. <laughs> I know, but that's okay. I, I enjoyed myself last night. But like, how was, the, how was the actual feel like during the parade route? And finally, when you came down to Depends Landing. It was phenomenal. I mean, I always have to shout out Lambertville New Hope Pride. We are yeah. the only interstate pride in the entire country. We start in Lambertville, New Jersey and end in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Um, You're going to be on my float next year because I'm going to do a live through speakers float of a live broadcast. Cool. Well, I'm happy to do it. And now you got that on recording, so you'll hold that, me to yeah, it. That's it. Um, but that's how you do it, kids. <laughs> that's how you get a document signed right there. 
So uh, it was really exciting uh, to be a part of the Grand Marshals float. Mm -hmm. I got to sit next to Ed Rendell, another uh, incredible mayor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just the overwhelming sense of happiness and joy that comes from Prides is like, it's a totally lifting uh, right. for the soul, you know? That's awesome. And every year you see younger and younger and younger kids like waving pride flags. It just makes you feel like uh, you've done something special and important that day. Absolutely. So do you, do you feel now like, you know, being so young, sure. being a mayor, being an LGBT, uh, you know, representative. Sure. I mean, how are you going to impact that next generation? Because they're not far off from you at this point. No, I mean, I, I mean I'm a, a proud millennial. I listen, say there it may all the be time. a little kid out there looking up saying, I can now be mayor too. Well, absolutely. I mean, I've already had several kids in my, uh, from Lambertville Public School, which is our elementary school, say that they were going to run against me next cycle. And I've had to tell them, you have to wait until you're at least 18. So <laughs> I got a little bit of time. Um, no, it's uh, it really is exciting to be, to feel like you're impacting your community and, I know that uh, I was blessed to have people like Hillary Clinton up on the public uh, stage and Nancy Pelosi when I was uh, growing up and seeing women in leadership and it's even more exciting to have uh, young gay women in leadership too. That's you, awesome. you don't believe you can do it until you can see it. And, and now you've been a part of the parade and gotten a word on stage when before you used to come to Philadelphia Prides quite often. That's right. And that's going to be a different feel for you. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... I'm. I love Philly Pride. Uh, I went to Bryn Mawr College, and so I've been coming to Philly Pride for quite a while. Uh, but it You're was, 28. It, well, I mean, in the span of my lifetime, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but it was really exciting to get to see the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, because I deal with a Lambertville New Hope Pride, it's nice to see that on like a much grander scale. Right. Uh, but. I love Pride. It's the best. Awesome. I love what a it. day, right? It, and it's beautiful out. I mean, last year oh. was pouring down rain even for new hope last year it was pouring down rain and we've had two really good prides happening i call this a chamber of commerce day that's there a, you go yeah. i like that i like that well i want to thank you for joining thank us. you so I'm much oh, i'm gonna I give you a hug it. that's right because she's gonna come on my float and for all of you out there we will be back with more drinks just stay tuned Welcome back to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is Jess Brown, your host, and I am home finally from Philadelphia Pride. All right, I'm just going to recap because obviously, and, and I want to thank Mayor Julia Fall from Lambertville, New Jersey, for joining me today over at the Hilton at Penn's Landing. And I want to thank all the people at the Hilton for hosting me. It was uh, wonderful to be there. I pretty much set up shop all day. I did try to go into Center City and set up there, but by the time I got there, guys, Lines were incredible. I mean, it was it was probably about 4 o'clock. I was supposed to meet up with a few other people. But if I could tell you, I could not even get into a place. Plus, I had all my equipment with me. But I could not even get in because the lines were around the block. Philadelphia did it well this year. And if you missed it, I'm sorry you did, but you're going to have to catch it next year. But there are plenty of other Pride events going on, guys, every weekend. And you know what? It's even extending. Because I am going to be with Darren Frommel Farrell of Pop the Question. And we are going to be in central Pennsylvania in Harrisburg at Pride all the way at the end of July. So if you are out there in Harrisburg, please make sure you come by and see us because we will be set up and in effect. But this is, this is a monumentous year. I love seeing the joy and the celebration the community that we have built. I mean, the LGBTQ community is not just the gay community. We encompass different religions, different ethnicities, different uh, races, different um, gender identities, uh, different colors. I mean, we just are a community that's built like the melting pot that the United States was built. And we do have to make sure that we remember, and this year especially was important because we were also celebrating lives that were lost. Two days ago, well, actually two days ago, but when you're listening to this, it'll be a couple of days. Here in Philadelphia, we lost a pillar of our community, 
uh, Deputy Sheriff Dante Austin. And I want to make sure that I send my condolences out to his family and friends and everybody um, that has been affected by uh, his sudden passing due to attempted suicide. By the way, if you are contemplating suicide, please find it in the show notes. Contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. They are there to help. And if you don't call them, if you don't feel comfortable talking to your friends or your parents about whatever's going on with you, contact somebody in your community. That's what we've done. We have built a family. This is what the show does. This is what our community has done. And we have seen it this weekend. Anybody out there is willing to listen, willing to help, willing to care, willing to give a hug. It is incredible the amount of support that you actually have out there if you just reach out and let us know because that's what we're here for. But Dante was the first openly gay deputy sheriff here in Philadelphia. He was a lover of all people. He was a community figure. He protected us. He kept us safe. And he loved what he did and his spirit was certainly felt this weekend and we will continue to celebrate uh with dante uh because he was there with us absolutely in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits so again big condolences to everybody that was affected by his passing and also we have to remember that this is the third anniversary of the pulse nightclub massacre now if you didn't remember it which I don't know how you couldn't. I mean, this was the largest attack on the LGBT community that we have seen in U.S. history. This was an act of violence. <clears throat> this was an event where 49 innocent people who were out for a night being able to be who they are in a place that allowed that and gave them that safe space. This is an event that rocked not only families and friends of those that lost their lives, but an entire community, a national and international community. And you could hear that ring, and you still hear that ring, all over social media, that we stand with Orlando, and we still continue to do so. And in fact, right now, if you're watching on YouTube, here are the... 49 uh, innocent people who lost their lives. But at this point, this gives us strength. This allows us to become more united and to fight for what's right and to allow people to not be overcome with fear and with, with hate because we will not stand for that anymore. And it's about time that we look back on this and we start pressuring our legislators to enact gun laws, to to enact anti-hate, anti-crime, anti-violence laws against our community and against others. Because enough's enough. There is no reason at this time in our history, nor was it three years ago, that innocent people lost their lives because they love who they love or because they are who they are, or they look like what they look like. So I am calling all of you to take action and make sure during this election year that you stand up for what's right and we build as a community to make a difference, not only for our community, but for others. Because this is something that is taking over businesses, schools, communities. It, it, the violence has to stop, guys. So let Pride season this year be your chance to show your strength. Let it be your chance to come together and enjoy pride for the rest of the season in celebration. And that's all I've got. It's been a good day. It's been a long day for all of you out there. Please contact me on dwjphl.com. Find all of our social media links there. And we will talk to you next week. Probably, uh, Actually, I'm not going to be at another Pride next week. I'm going to be at an LGBTQ event, which you will see. And I'll be there loud and proud. For the rest of you out there, have a good night.